today I've got to talk about the problem of location. When I say location, actually what I mean is relocation. Now it may feel a little bit less relevant actually for the fact that we're in this COVID world where a lot of us are working from home or, you know, partially working from home. But the reality is a lot of companies are cost cutting and are still planning for that moment where they are going to be back in the office. So the consideration is cost cutting. What usually happens when people cost cut? They want to close larger hubs and then they want to open offices in places that aren't expensive. Now places that aren't expensive tend to be either less populous, but there's one thing that's often forgotten. They also tend to be less multicultural. So when you're making that offer to your black female colleague, to move from, I don't know, like, let's just say, to move from London to Yorkshire or, sorry, anyone who's from Yorkshire and black, it's not to say there aren't black people there, but you know what I'm saying. But when you're making this offer, when you're making this offer to say, well, hey, you know, you can still keep your job, but the terms of you keeping your job are moving to a lo this location, this location that is off the beaten path, have you as a company considered the offer that you're making? Because one of the things to really think about in supporting your black female colleagues is the following. We're not just black in the office, we're also black outside. And while a company provides, rep or provides an umbrella, as I like to call it, a reputational umbrella, a level of protection inside, as soon as we step outside those doors, we're just any other woman, we're just any other black woman walking on the street. It doesn't matter what profession, what level we are in the office, it doesn't matter how professional we are, it doesn't matter what we do, we are still categorized in the same group as everybody, as every other black woman and what the, the people who look at us, what they stereotype us to be, right? So when you're making this offer, and when I say that, when you're making this offer to say, hey, go to this place that's less populous, that's off the beaten track, you're looking at your bottom line number to say, well, hey, instead of paying X thousand a month, we're gonna be paying 30, 50% less. But is that really the best option if you want to retain black colleagues? Because the question they're going to have to think about is, is it worth me making this move with the company to move to this area where I will almost immediately feel like an outsider as a black woman? I may not feel safe there as a black woman. Suppose I don't like working in the office. What are my chances then of being able to find another job in this area, especially as a black woman? So when you're making these offers, please realize that it's not just you're relocating and you're saving money, you're actually putting a huge weight on the shoulders of your black female colleagues. Because this isn't just a move with a company, this is really having to think about how do I live? How will I survive? Will I fit in? Will the, will the area be racist? How will my colleagues receive me? Are they used to working with black people? And do you know something? The question like, are they used to working with black people is a very unfortunate one, but it's one that has to still be posed because there is, you cannot, you know, black people, black women are always calculating. You cannot assume that it will be all right. You have to calculate what is my get out? What is my worst case scenario? So what seems on paper an obvious move, in an obvious move to save money is not an obvious move if you're sitting in the position where you have to decide, do I move from a popular, lo a populous location, a populous multicultural location to one where I could potentially be one of the very few black women, black people in this area. So think about it, because this is really something that is often missed. You know, looking at retention numbers, why can't we keep black women in the company? Maybe sometimes it has to do with relocation. That the ask, that the requirement to move, that the ask is simply too great that you're asking them to give up far too much to receive far too little and far too little protection in return. So this is the point really. Dismantling anti-racism is one part of it, 
but allowing somebody to thrive, allowing black women to thrive, allowing black women to feel safe is also understanding the repercussions of decisions that are made purely based on numbers and not made with the understanding of how the world still treats black women today. So on that note, thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.